के म्यूरल आपके साथ और हमारे स्टूडियो में है संतोष गनेसन ओवर 25 फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन सेल्स वर्क इन टू इंडस्ट्रीज ऑटोमोबाइल एंड लाइफ इंश्योरेंस ही इज लिविंग इन द जी सी सी सिंस टू थाउजेंड वन वर्क इन ओमान एंड यू ए दस साल के एक्सपीरियंस इन यू ए लाइफ इंश्योरेंस एडवाइजरी एंड सेल्स ही इज हेडेड आईफा लाइफ चैनल फॉर टू ब्रोकरेज इन दुबई प्रायर टू जॉइनिंग इंश्योरेंस मार्केट डॉट ए in 2020 and currently he's the head at uh, you know insurance market dot ae where life insurance and financial planning is concerned welcome to the show santosh thank you so much thanks for having me so the first things first like we'd like to ask you where life insurance and financial planning is concerned how important is it for one to sit and kind of have uh, you know map out the the road ahead for them it is uh, very important in fact uh, Life insurance is a very um, important tool um, when it comes to, you know, planning your personal finances. Right. So it is a very uh, um, important instrument, mm -hmm. you know, in an individual's overall personal financial planning. Mm -hmm. So it plays a very vital role. Right. So you know, the 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 natural uh, feeling for people is that when it comes to personal finance, it's mm -hmm. about your income, your expenses, then. Mm -hmm. you know how much of your surplus income then how do you save invest but what um we also need to think about is that uh the the contingencies or what do you call the the downside risk of life mm. so life insurance do play a very important vital role in addressing that that part which is what do you call the the risk management part right. of personal finance you know what uh, intrigued me a lot is that you joined insurance market dot ae in 2020 now this was the time the height of pandemic yeah and that is when people started realizing the financial security they need to have uh, did you notice that as well santosh yeah it was a very uh, pivotal moment uh, for the industry as a whole if you can say that you know it was once in a generation kind of an event uh, it it really was something that no one had experienced before Yeah, um, but for, as an advisor or as as someone who works in the life insurance, it was not a good time for sales. In fact, you know because uh, that was not people's priority at that time. But uh, post that initial you know shock and 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 fear, of course, this was one of the the top priority things that came to people's mind. Uh, we did have you know a good traction in the market post that uh, right. catastrophic event. Right, you know when you're talking about a life insurance or life financial planning, for that matter, should life insurance be uh, a part of a financial planning? Should this be included in it? Yeah, I would say that this should be the first thing in your personal financial planning because you know, um, for us, the first thing that we, of course, you know, we all think about is that how do we we we, we generate an income, right? Because mm -hmm. the the income generation comes always first to our priorities when it comes to you know um going into our adulthood and you know thinking of becoming financial it's all about the money yeah it's about you know how do we make money <laughs> which is of course important but then we also need to think about uh, is that what contributes to this this uh, income because hmm. we think yes it's my ability or my skills and knowledge and my education my job but what we don't understand is that actually there's something much more uh, uh basic to all of that the fact that we are alive and healthy that's what gives us all this uh, you know financial security so the question is that is that guaranteed no right mm. so we need to really see that how do we how do we how do we plan for this risk mm. we can't we can't really guarantee that we will be healthy and alive forever Correct. but there is something that we can guarantee is that even though we cannot manage this particular risk of you know being healthy and alive but we can very well to a certain extent thanks to life insurance as a, as a financial arrangement we can always you know plan for the the impact mm. we can well manage you know the 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 impact mm. so that way yes uh, life insurance plays a very important role i would say that this should be the first in your bucket list when it comes to Your financial personal planning. financial planning yes right you know we will discuss more as well we will ask you about uh, different life insurances that are available at insuransemarket.ae and which one would be the best to opt for right now stock in traffic we'll continue the discussion agar aapke paas bhi sawal do let us know 0586861003
Welcome back to Daybreak. Still in conversation with Santosh Ganesan, Head of Life Insurance and Financial Planning, insurancemarket.ae. Now, we are talking to you about insurances, but the first things first, when I am, uh, you know, when I sought out to buy an insurance or to seek an insurance, what are the things I need to bear in mind uh, if I am looking out for a financial insurance? Or for a life insurance for that yeah there are three things look uh, at insurance market we do it in in a very three stage one what we call it as advisory mm. uh, the second is what you call onboarding and the third is servicing so I'll, I'll go the advisory is where we help the clients uh, decide what to buy mm. right you know what to buy so in, in the what to buy the clients would need some advice as to you know what is the ideal level of cover how much should they buy what the type cheapest of, one yeah yeah what type of different <laughs> insurance policies yeah, yeah true yeah, of course yeah. cost is also an important factor yeah, okay. but this is where people wants to know like how much should i be insuring myself for because it's not the one size fits all right because each one's net worth is different so mm. each one's insurable amounts will also be different so at this stage we in consultation with our clients we now help them identify like how much should be their ideal level of cover, what's the the right type of policy for them that fits their budget, their requirements. So this is about the the one thing, which is the advisory. The second is the onboarding. It's simple, like, you know, how to buy it. Mm. Like now that you have decided, okay, this is the policy that I should have, and this is the, the cost that I must uh, incur, now how do I go about it? Because life insurance, as you say, that the buying process is also pretty unique. So, you know, it's it not just applying and getting a cover because mm. it's an individual insurance company is buying the, the risk of insuring a person. Mm. Correct. So each individual is unique, right? You know, so right. insurance company would need to to medical ask test? some questions. Yeah, medical oh. quest. There will be some health questionnaires. So each individual is assessed separately um, to, to see what's the risk involved uh, so that the insurance company is able to assess what kind of premium to charge. The, uh, Luckily, to there the is no fitness challenge. Luckily, there is no fitness test. Yeah, Otherwise... No, there is. There, there is, is a fitness yeah, test? Yeah, correct. It depends oh. on like what that, level of cover. Those are blood tests that we're talking about. They're not like extreme tests that are done. Like 100 meters, how much you can run in? Yeah, but it, it depends on like, and if you're applying for a very small cover, mm. then it's only based on your declaration, disclosures, because mm. it's in, in good faith. But if you're applying for large covers, like for example, a million dollars and above, then insurance company do call you for medical tests. So they do, uh, the, the list of tests depend on the amount of cover again. Correct. If you're applying for $5 million, the list will be much more detailed. The test will be much more detailed than if you are to apply for only, let's say, a million dollar cover. So, yeah. Right. But when you're talking again about insurance, um, you, you have a list of them that, uh, you know, that you co-work with as insurancemarket.ae. You house a bunch of these brands. Any particular the ones that garner that kind of attention always by your uh, onboarders? Yeah. Attention always by your uh, onboarders? Yeah, of course, you know, we are an independent broker. So the the reason why people choose uh, working with a broker compared to, you know, directly working with an insurer is that we provide them with the, the comparative shopping experience because it's one place you have uh, access to all insurers. So we help you save your time. You don't have to individually go and, you know, uh, choose out insurers. So he, at, at Insurance Market or Day, we have relationship with all insurance companies in the market. So we, um, for all of our clients, you know, once they have decided, okay, I want to proceed, we provide them with the, the different competitive quotes so they are able to know the prices of uh, different insurance companies. Mm -hmm. But, well, yeah, I mean, it's a radio show. I do not want to favor because, you know, we usually as, as a business maintain neutrality. We treat all insurance companies alike. We What we look at is actually the, insure, the, the, the client's requirements. Mm -hmm. And then we see, like, you know, which requirement meets which product and then we do the the matching nice but when yeah. you get go for a life insurance you know what we understand is a lot of times you think that you know life insurance you will get at maturity or it's after your death your family will get mm. are there other types or are there only these two types yeah because this is the more uh, conventional traditional type of policy that we all you know are used to especially as indians i'm sure you know we come from uh, you right. know, we know that my, the typical insurance is the lic made me do a yeah exactly lic back home the moment i started working I he think got all of us do <laughs> have an lic traditional yeah, way because, yeah. you know, <clears throat> because our our basic uh, knowledge of life insurance for most of us come from this you know experience or, or our parents experience of uh, having an LIC policy, but things have moved on a, on a lot because now there are different types of insurance policies. The one that you mentioned about, which 
which has a maturity value. That's one type of policy. But there are also different other kinds of policies like the term insurances, the whole of life insurance policies, endowment policies. Now, term insurance is the more cheaper, cost-effective way of uh, buying a life insurance policy because if you are someone who's looking at buying a life insurance policy at a very minimum cost, and term insurance is the option. But remember, because uh, there's no excuse for people not to have at least at least one term insurance policy because, you know, you can buy it at a very minimum cost of like 30 dirhams, 40 dirhams, 50 Correct. dirhams per month. Now, uh, Santosh, I also want to get an understanding from you. Is there any particular reason why claims have not been received and why people keep uh, repeating themselves? Yeah, I'm aware of that. In fact, you know, there are some people who say that, look, I've been paying. But remember, it's a good question you asked. Remember that, look, uh, in a life insurance, when you're buying a life insurance policy, the, the most important thing is the application process. Wow. Yeah, nice. because, you know, a lot of clients who just, who take this application process very lightly, mm. you know, they sometimes trust their advisors and they say that, look, I want to buy a policy and the advisor gets a f few forms signed and submitted. But remember, you as a policy buyer has a responsibility to make sure that uh, the the, you read all the questions in the application. Mm. You you understand all the questions. You answer mm. all those questions correctly, because you are entering into a contract with a with a financial institution. Right. So you have a duty to make sure that you have conveyed all known information about your health, your family history, mm. the other occupation risk, the kind of hobbies that you have. Maybe you are a guy who who do regular Horse diving riding. or you know uh, adventures. Uh, adventures. Yeah. So your insurance company should be should be made known. Are you on medication for any conditions? So once you have answered all questions, you know, correct uh, and answer them, then only the insurance company will be in a position to assess the risk and price you accordingly. Right. So once you have done it very thoroughly, look, no insurance company in the world can mm. deny claims because insurance companies exist to pay claims. Right. Now the, the dispute comes in when people have, you know, maybe with conditions, they just go ahead and buy a policy saying I'm healthy. Mm. Now, insurance companies, when they come to find out that this guy, you know, didn't disclose all information, right. they have a legal ground, you know, to, to deny claims. But otherwise, that is why working with a very reliable partner, a good advisor, is, is super important, important when and it comes to buying life insurance. Also, it happens a lot of time that 100% of the claims are also not given, right? I mean, does that happen? Is because of After the same being reason? After you're saying? Whatever the reason could be, could this be one of the reasons that you haven't disclosed information and that's the reason 100% of the claim because there might be some charges which the insurance company charges? Uh, look, the if you look at the claim statistics which the insurance companies publish every three years, the death claims are usually in the range of 97-98%. Oh, okay. So it's not 100%. So the question uh, could be like why the 2% or 3% claims not paid. I right. mean, this is the reason. It is mostly to with... Uh, you know, maybe fraudulent applications. Mm. And sometimes, um, you know, uh, claims do happen for certain benefits within the waiting period as well, usually for life cover. Mm. If you are buying cover against death, it doesn't have a life cover because the cover starts from day one. But for certain other benefits, like if you are including uh, critical illness covers, there's a three months waiting period. So if a claim happens within the waiting period, then insurance companies don't pay the claims. But otherwise, if the application is clean, you know, you've been truthful, and if all uh, known information about you has been, you know, mm. uh, revealed to the insurance company, the contract no is intact. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so now I have a question for you. You mentioned about claims, right? Now, for example, I've taken, say, an insurance for 10 or 15 years. Now, if I have given certain information at the onset of my application, and maybe, say, I want to change it eventually or whatever because I deem it not fit when I have, uh, you know, taken the uh, insurance, why is there no intervening done by the insurance company, say, midway through my application so that I don't lose out on the entire uh, premium that I've paid for all these years? Shouldn't there be an intervening done maybe midway through saying that because of X, Y, Z reasons or maybe because I was not uh, uh, truthful with the kind of information that I've put onto the table, I could be at a loss of money eventually. So I I'm just trying to understand this in a broader way, in a broader spectrum. Look, it is the, the, the applicant's duty primarily, you know, mm -hmm. at the time of buying because the insurance companies only need you to disclose information which is known to you at the time of buying the policy. Because, of course, a lot of things may change, you know, since you have submitted an application for which you are not at a breach of uh, disclosure. Mm. 
the insurance companies uh, is very clear that you only need to disclose uh, to them information known to you at the time of buying. So, you know, you may wonder like, you know, at the time of buying a policy, I'm healthy. I haven't gone for any consultation. But then there may be something that's already developing inside you mm-hmm. about which you have no known information at the time. Am I still at a, at a, at a breach of disclosure? You're not. Because that is information which is not known to you yet. Right. So if you have known, if you have disclosed to the insurance company all the known information, you're fine. But uh, insurance company will, will, will not be able to know, like, you know, uh, whether you have made a rightful, you know, correct disclosure or not until it comes for claim. Because it is at that claim stage the insurance companies do their, you know, part of verification before paying out the claim, especially if the claim happens within the first two years of buying your policy, because the checks will be a bit more stringent mm. compared to if the claim happens at a later stage. Right. Uh, if you could just talk to us a little bit more about insurances, about uh, the difference, firstly, between health insurance and medical insurance. I think the mo- most of us think medical, <laughs> medical insurance and life is, is the, the same. Yeah. Life. No, it is not the same. Yeah. In fact, yeah, a lot of people think that medical and life are the same. No. The main distinction is that uh, medical insurance primarily covers you for the cost of treatment. Mm. Right. If, if you fall sick, what does it mean? It means two things. Right. One, uh, you need money to treat yourself. Second, what people don't realize is that you also need time to recover. Mm-hmm. Now, a, a medical insurance is, is helpful if you are diagnosed with some, you know, viral parasitic diseases which you can go to a you know, doctor, uh, get an antibiotic and be ready in about five, seven days. But there are also illnesses that would need more time, like critical illnesses, we call it, mm. you know, um, a cancer or a heart disease or organ failure. So that may require you more time now, if you only have a medical insurance, uh, it, that policy won't be of help to you in, in such situations. Because insur- medical insurance will only help you pay for the cost of treatment. You don't have to pay the money for consultation, diagnostics, or you know, medicines. But having a life insurance policy with critical illness riders added, this will give you a, a lump sum payout, a cash mm. payout. Mm. So let's say you know, due to an illness, you're unable to work for a year or six months you are going to be on unpaid leave, right? As per UAE's labor law, if you're not on, uh, um, if you're on sick leave, I think as per the law, it's about 45 days of paid uh, leave. Yeah. Another 45 of unpaid leave. And after that, you're on your own. So during this time, having a critical illness will certainly help you to get some to access to cash, which is much needed to meet your other living so costs. So it's a kind of a cushion you're saying? Absolutely. Oh yeah, right. What are the? Could you uh, take us through the different sort of insurances quickly? We're running out of time, but uh, the ones that we need to pay focus or pay attention on. Well, I think the in, in life insurance, the different type of insurance is the term insurance, the whole of life, uh, mainly these two categories. So uh, term insurance, I think I already told you about. Right. It's just yeah. uh, like a car insurance. You just pay the cost of insurance. Um, it, the 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 deal is simple. If you pay, you get. You don't pay, you don't get. So as per the terms of the contract, if you die within the coverage term, the insurance company has a legal liability to pay the claim. If not, that's it. It's just like a car insurance. Mm. You pay the premium. If, if your car doesn't meet with an accident, do you get the premium back? No, right? No. So that so term insurance policy is like that. That's one type of insurance. The other is the whole of life insurance. So whole of life insurance is not just insurance. You also have some savings investments built into it. Mm. So it's like a hybrid. It's a two-in-one. So you have um, both the insurance and the savings. So if in future you're alive and healthy, you, you get a chance to cash out the policy and use the proceeds maybe for your other needs in future funding. Perfect. Thank you so very much, Santosh. What an amazing conversation this has turned out to be. I hope we can take a leaf out of our conversation and try and uh, you know use that for the benefit of our future and especially our security. 